here today at Wellesley High School where all things STEM and STEAM have converged, that science, technology, math, engineering, and art have all gotten together under one roof, brought to you by Wellesley STEM Expo, which is a Wellesley Education Foundation event. We have today over 120 hands-on exhibits for people to touch and experience, workshops, and student showcases. This is Sue Sowers, one of the Expo coordinators, and she'd like to say a few words. Welcome everyone. This is a great day and there's so much happening, so much to learn and check out and we're just so thrilled that everyone is here. I have bracelets produced by the 3D printer and it's snowing outside and it hasn't deterred the crowd. No, absolutely not. People are just pouring in. People have been here early getting set up and ready to go. And so Right now you guys can see that the egg, it just doesn't fit in on its own, right? So how do you think I can get the egg to go into the flask? Yes. By pushing it in, but if I push it in, do you think it'll smush the egg and it'll just break apart? So I'm going to try to see if I can get the egg in there without it breaking apart. And so the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to burn this piece of napkin inside of the flask and I'm going to put the egg on top of it. This horseshoe crab has a shell made out of the same stuff as our fingernails. So if you just picture touching your fingernail wet, that's what it feels like. See? Alright, do you know what the pink spot is on top there? We have with us WEF co-presidents, Wellesley Education Foundation ladies in charge. CEOs Linda Chow and Carol Morrow. Would you like to say a few words about this fantastic event today? Well, um, we're excited to be offering the second expo uh, two years in a row, and we're thrilled so far with the attendance. It looks like we're going to have a record crowd. We know already that we have 50% more exhibits and workshops this year, so we have well over 120. And we also have an exciting speaker series um, and an amazing keynote speaker. We had almost a thousand people registered to, for this event before today and then even today we have so many people registering as well. So it's going to be very much a, break, a record breaking year for um, attendance and it's going to be a wonderful event. I just wanted to say thank you to all our volunteers for making this happen. The steering committee for the STEM Expo did a, has done a marvelous job and it's really up all for them that we have such a great event today. Listen. Nothing, huh? Nothing. Okay, now I'm going to hit it. Watch. See it moving? Oh, yeah. Now watch. Now here, listen. Buzzing? Oh, yeah, it's like buzzing. Now, put your hand out. I'm going to touch it. It won't hurt you. Okay? Here we go. I like your glasses. Those are awesome. Isn't that? Oh. We're here at the STEM Expo doing sort of a variety of things. Um, we have a bunch of different uh, displays and papers on a variety of information relating to uh, sustainability in the high school. We're also running um, a uh, exhibit um, in partnership with the Charles River Association. Um, it's about it's called Watershed in a Box, um, and it's it demonstrates the um, effect of different um, contaminants um, on the watershed. So our animals living there, like turtles and fish, now have to live with the plastic water bottles and the other things that we pollute into their. Um, environment so would you enjoy someone coming and putting tons of trash in your room and then saying well here's some trash have fun no that wouldn't be good at all we're here with Wellesley College brain booth and professor to who will tell us about this amazing exhibit so thanks very much we have um, at our first station we have a microscope set up with a mouse brain so people can look at a mouse brain section and individual brain cells or neurons that are in the brain and then at the next station we have sheep brains, so people can come and actually hold a sheep brain. They can cut up a sheep brain and look at the different parts in, in a sheep brain. And then in our next station we actually have human brains, so we have human brain models. And we actually have human brain sections in plastic so that kids can look at a human brain and compare it to the sheep brain that they just saw. 
And then the final station is Dr. Michael Giger, who's a neurosurgeon here in Wellesley, and he's telling people about brain imaging and how to do preventive measures to protect the brain against stroke and other injury. When people have a brain problem, we look at them without trying to take the brain out and slice it up like the sheep. This is a lot more benign. So this is an MRI scan. It's one of the best ways we have of looking into the brain and seeing what's going on. And I like people to start at this picture because it, it gets you oriented. You can recognize a nose and a lips and a mouth and a tongue. That's the outline of the head. So this is a side view, looking in with the nose there. And hemispheres, cerebellum, brain stem, spinal cord. So you see a lot of the same things you saw in the sheep brain. There are a lot of similarities between sheep brain and human brain. But the MRI lets us really get a look and see what's abnormal in a person who's got a problem. This person has a tumor. So this is a mid-sagittal slice. So if your eyes are right here, it'd be like if you cut right down through the center like that. And then this is sagittal slice. Yes, perfect. It's called a coronal slice. Um, and so what's one of your favorite activities to do? Play basketball. Play basketball. Do you want to talk about the different brain regions you use when you play basketball? Sure. All right, so this is a model of an adult human brain. It's about the same size as an adult human brain. And so when you're playing basketball, you're going to be using your motor cortex, which is right here. Are you right-handed or left-handed? Right-handed. All right, so when you're bouncing your ball with your right hand, you're going to use the left side of your motor cortex, that's right. And then you're going to have your somatosensory cortex that you're using when you feel the ball. And then you're going to use your auditory cortex when you're hearing your other um, team members playing, right? And then when you're looking um, at the basketball and see, seeing all of the things that you see, you use your occipital cortex right here. Um, and then to help you keep your balance as you're running around, yep, you use your cerebellum. Hi, my name is John. I'm a senior software engineer with iRobot. I'm here helping get children interested in robotics and math and science and uh, hanging out with Mass State EOD dog here, Sierra. And um, I work closely with Steve and the Mass State EOD to help them uh, build robots to do their job better and to keep them safe. So is the, uh, is the uh, iRobot, um, what is it, the Cobra that helps with the bomb squad? Is that here today? It is. It's actually right behind me. Uh, it's a 500-pound robot capable of lifting 350 pounds. And um, we can roll that thing down hills, it can get back up and keep going. Very, very, very capable and uh, cool robot. We're here with Steve with uh, Bomb Squad and uh, he's gonna tell us what he thinks. Of the expo? That's pretty cool. It's a great way for the kids to see the, you know, the math and science that they're diving into in school actually goes towards something uh, in the not too distant future. In this case, the robots and the canine a lot of that science and math that um, they struggle through, or I did anyway, actually has a uh, pretty good application. We just met your partner, Sierra, the bomb sniffing dog. So she's a big hit. Tell us about the robot. Uh, the robot, it's, uh, we, we have quite a few of them on the, the state police bomb squad. This particular one is called a PackBot 510. Uh, if you, when you take a picture of it, you'll see that it's kind of like a human. It has everything a human has. It has legs, feet, elbow, shoulder, wrist, hands, head and eyes. Uh, the obvious advantage is you're sending a hunk of machinery downrange on something that potentially could explode as opposed to a human being initially. Um, and in the civilian world, things such as evidence, collection, taking pictures, taking video, very, very valuable in order to close a case out. You have the gripper where you can manipulate things, move things, rip things apart. But primarily the robot is actually a, it's a weapons platform. We can actually attach uh, a, an item called a pan disruptor, which is basically a reinforced shotgun barrel, and we can use uh, clay rounds, or more, more, um, more often or not, we use uh, jets of water. So we can fill the uh, the barrel actually up with some water, and water, uh, for all you science people, obviously is um, non-compressible. You can't compress water. You can't squish it down. It maintains the the shape of the container that it's in. So when it's uh, propelled from behind at uh, high speeds, it's a fantastic tool. Smashes things apart, uh, but then the water dissipates and it's gone. So briefly, that's what the robot does. It's a, it's a nice tool. And water is biodegradable, so it works on so many levels. Yes, it is. Yes, awesome. 
And I see that's being controlled with the uh, iPad there. Yeah, this is uh, the brand new um, application for my robot. It's actually a, a, um, an iPad, a U-Point iPad, uh, which is the brand new operating system for it. There's only four of them that I'm aware of that they're beta testing right now, and we were lucky enough to get one. And we're just giving them feedback back on uh, how, how, how tough it is to master, which is now being mastered by a, a, like a six-year-old kid. Uh, this is the truly depressing part of my job. I spend years uh, perfecting my craft, and I hand it off to the video game generation, and they get it in about seven minutes. We're here with Karen Riccardi from the Riverbend Montessori School. Karen, tell us about the hovercraft. Well, it's uh, an invention that our kids put together. It's um, made with um, using a um, leaf blower as the main source of energy. And um, yeah, it was a really exciting and proud project for us to see our, our middle schoolers put something like that together. And you're the director. Yes, I am the head of Riverbend. And um, one of our philosophies here at our school is, is really to have kids be interactive and be able to actually be project based and so this is a perfect example of something that they would do. And you have a preschool program and also an upper school program that goes up to? Uh, eighth grade, so we serve 15 month old toddlers through all the way through eighth grade, about 14 years old. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you. Here with Olin College, so tell us your names and what this thing is. Hi, I'm Luke. And I'm Encore. Um, and so this is a uh, electric trike that our team, uh, Revo, Research of Electric Vehicle at Olin, developed, uh, or we designed and built last year, last academic year. Um, and so it's, it's all electric. Uh, we do all the stuff in-house. So we uh, designed the battery box, designed the trike, um, and then we have a team that's also doing all of the electronic systems as well. Um, and it's what we're currently working on. So it's... Did you build this for an event? Um, no, this was actually a project motivated by, we wanted to build a vehicle that's road legal, so something we could drive around. So we actually got this legal as a street legal moped, so we can drive it around the streets of Wellesley, around Needham, and it's also off-road capable, so we can take it wherever we want. It's more of a fun side project for us. So when we see you driving this thing around the streets of Wellesley, we'll know who to call over at Olin College, right? And it's pretty lightweight, I see you can pick it up and lift it. Yeah, um, it's actually around 100 pounds without the batteries, so it's nice, you know, with two people, you can basically lift it, move it around, and it helps to go pretty fast, too, because you have a really strong motor and powertrain system with a really light vehicle. Um, you get to move around pretty quick. How fast is fast? Um, so we, can, we think that it'll go about 40 miles per hour once we get it up to speed, so that for something this small, 40 miles an hour is pretty quick. 